Amen. Psalmist says in 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. That means even when it rains, hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. in heaven we were glad when they said unto us let us go into the house of the Lord even after a prolonged pandemic we do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the custom of others but we press together all the more as we see the day of Jesus Christ approaching. I thank you for each and every person who's made it out to your house of worship. Bless them, Lord. Signally, they will know that they've been in the presence of the true and living God. Speak to our hearts, Lord, and may your spirit take control of every aspect of this worship today that when we leave here every fetter will have come off every chain will have been broken and we will be empowered by your spirit today we thank you in advance for what you will do in Jesus name let the church say amen amen and amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord It's good to see you all here in the house. I know some Christians are allergic to rain. I know my man Stephen, he done, he done went through mud and, and uh, you know, riverbed just to be here at the house of the Lord. You know, so... I'm praising God for each and every one of you being here today. We are grateful that you've made it out today. I um, want to thank all of our guests who are joining us on Zoom. Oh, look at her. Um, and YouTube, we are grateful and we are thankful that you are joining us. Um, if you're in the Tucson area, we would want to encourage you to come down to 955 North 10th Avenue and come and worship or with us. No matter how blessed you are watching us online, there's nothing about, there's nothing as good as being here, the real thing. And so if you're in the Tucson area, 955 North 10th Avenue, we would love for you to come and join us and worship the Lord in person, in spirit, and in truth. But we thank you for being with us. And for those of you who are watching us on Zoom, we do ask for you to do three things for us. 
so that you will be blessed. First thing is to give us a thumbs up and like us on YouTube, and that will allow other people to come and join us as well. Second thing we would suggest for you to do is simply subscribe. And if you subscribe, you will have access to all of our content. And then the last thing we would ask for you to do is to hit the notification button, that little bell. That will inform you each and every time that we go live so you won't miss anything. And if you do those three things, I am convinced that you will be blessed of the Lord. So again, thank you for joining us on YouTube today. We want to thank all of you for being here again today. Um, today is the day the Lord has made, and I know I'm going to rejoice and, and be glad in it. I do have a, a card. We're going to try to transition from paper to the, to the tablet, <laughs> but we're going to work with what we have. Um, Jessica Sims, Jessica Sims, will you please stand? Just one. Okay. Praise, praise the Lord. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Thank you for joining us today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Few announcements to share with you. Um, again, for those who are interested in praise dance and you were willing to participate in that, please have a conversation with Sister Sheena. McDuffie, she is going to be scheduling praise dance and uh, practice. You will learn step by step. And so um, if you're interested in learning to, the Bible says you can praise the Lord in the dance. Now, I don't, I'm just, that's Bible. So you can pray. Come on now, I got a witness here. So yes, this is a way you can praise God in dance. And so Sheena is the person you talk to and she, if you're interested and she will be scheduling practice for praise dance rehearsal. So please contact her in two weeks. In two weeks, how many weeks did I say? In two weeks, we will have our Christmas program. So not only do we want to see you in the place, your face in the place and your smile in the aisle, we want you to invite others to come and be blessed by this Christmas program on the 17th of December. So start sharing that with your friends, your neighbors, your family, co-workers, where they can come be blessed by the musical program that has been planned for all of us. So please do that. And uh, just one last announcement. Um, I need to grab the elders immediately um, after the program for a very very brief meeting um, in, in the pastor study. So please, uh, elders, don't leave. I'll need you very briefly in the pastor study after we're finished. But um, just want to let you know, hey, we are, it's that time again. And I think this is, you know, I'm hoping we'll get to the point where it will not be like this. But uh, the reality is, as um, you saw the email that I sent out, uh, Pima County, following the CDC guidelines is in the high community transmission of COVID. I want to encourage you when you're out and about, don't focus on what other people are not doing. Okay. Protect yourself and your loved ones. So if you're going to the Walmart or you're going anywhere where you're going indoors, I'm recommending to you to be masked up. A number of people are not feeling well. Um, I'm seeing it in my class in school. A lot of the students are saying, I'm not feeling good. I'm not feeling sick. We have the RSV happening for the fortunate for the kids who are impacted by that. Then we have rises in cases of influenza. And now COVID cases are on the rise. All of this happening simultaneously. And the best thing that you can do uh, to parrot Elder uh, Hudson is wash your hands. And if you not, don't have access to water, have sanitizer and sanitize your hands to get the germs off of your hands. We touch our faces more than we recognize. So keep your hands clean, wear a mask to protect yourself uh, and others. 
and you can do those things. I don't believe this is going to last a long time, um, but I anticipated a spike after Thanksgiving and We've got a spike. We're here. And as soon as we get out of the high transmission, we will be back to masks being optional. But at this point, while we're in high transmission, um, for everyone's safety, um, we will have the mask mandate in place. We appreciate your cooperation and your understanding. And for those who, hey, I'm, I'm wearing an N95. It's a little bit uh, different than the, the surgical mask. So <clears throat> I know the challenge. Um, and if it's that much of a challenge for you, hey, you've got access to our services online. Avail yourselves of that. So again, elders will meet briefly in the pastor's study. And um, again, our program on the 17th of December, our Christmas program. And um, if you want to... Uh, Learn to praise dance. Be sure to talk with Sister Sheena. We are going to now have our scripture reading. And our scripture reading is going to be brought to us today by um, Jonna Clark. And we're just, um, you know, I'm just really excited about seeing you here today. I, you know, I know how it is when there's a little rain. It scares folk off. You know, this is not a monsoon. You know, this is just a light drizzle. We praise God for it. Praise God. I'm always going to thank God for the rain. I'm never going to complain about the rain. Um, but the sad reality is, is when it rains, I'm like, oh, how many people are going to come to church? Rain. I praise God for you. When I look out, I said, here's the remnant <laughs> right here. <laughs> you are the saved of the Lord. So again. We just thank you. Sister Jonna Clark is going to have our scripture reading for us today. Morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Our scripture reading this morning is coming from Nehemiah, verse 1. Uh, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 6. Would you please stand? And I'm going to read from the English Standard Version. And Nehemiah verse 1, 6 says, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for the people of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word and let the hearers and the doers do his word. Thank you. Good morning, church. We've come to that time where we can just take an opportunity to go before the Lord and seek his face. Um, a couple of people I really want to recognize or we want to really keep in our hearts and minds are missing members. Um, the Miles as they travel, the Robinsons as they go through bereavement of a child. Um, that's a really hard thing. Um, <clears throat> and all of our, uh, our seniors who are pretty much sometimes can be trapped in their home, um, not only at a time like this, but during this whole pandemic, and then just because maybe they don't have family around. Um, so let's keep them in mind, as well as the homeless on a day like today. My heart is just heavy for them. They are out there wet, cold, sometimes hungry. So let's keep them in mind and keep them in our prayers as we go before the Lord. Um, typically we ask you to come forward, but 
at a time like this when we are concerned and we are all masked up, let's just kneel where we are if we possibly can. Um, and if not, the Lord still hears and knows your heart. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you, we just want to praise your name like no other day. We thank you, Lord, for the Sabbath day. We thank you, Father, for the rain. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come. No one has blocked our doors. We still have that religious freedom to come and praise your name together. Lord, and even those that are online, we're thankful that we have technology that can go far and wide to those that cannot make it in. So, Father, here we are. Take us, Lord. Forgive our sins, Father, and throw them into the sea of forgetfulness that we don't ever have to think about it again. We know that as we come and repent before you, Father, that you are faithful and just to forgive us. Oh, Father, we just want to lift up before you, Lord, those that are out there, the homeless, the addicted, Father. Our hearts are heavy for them today. As the rain comes down, we are all blessed. Those that have shelter, clothing, and food, we're thankful for the rain. We ask, Lord, that you would protect those that do not have the shelter. Let them find a place of warmth, comfort, and dryness. Father, we come before you lifting up the Robinson family, Lord, pastor has lost his child. He's lost his son. And we just ask, Lord, that you just be with him and give him and that child's mother peace, peace that passes all understanding. Father, we know that your will is <clears throat> going to be done. And we know that for all those things we don't understand, you're working it all out for our good. So, Father, help us to accept your will and to understand when there's nothing that tells us it should be. Help us to have faith bigger than our fear, oh God. Lord, we ask that you watch over our, sing our seniors, Lord, in their homes and out and about. And, Father, let us not forget our young people. Lord, I ask for an influx of young people that can come and be the leaders of our church for the future. Father, bring them by the droves because we need it. We need to see those young people here in our seats and our pews taking leadership, doing things that we cannot do. And Father, as we continue to worship you, we ask for those that are sick and shut in, oh God, Heal their bodies, Lord, in ways that, that we could never even imagine, Father. So many people that are afflicted these days, we ask that you watch over them. Father, help us to grow stronger and stronger and to love you and to come forward and be with you, Lord. Maybe even if we've lost our way, bring us back. Bring us back, oh God. And Lord, I just... I just want to thank you for everything you've done in all of our lives. Maybe we don't even see it, but we just went through a time of Thanksgiving, Lord, and help us to make that time daily. Every day we should be thanking you, Father, for what you bring. For when we go through the flood, we don't, we don't drown, Lord, for the fire that doesn't singe us for all those things, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would just bless our speaker today. Touch her, Lord, from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet, O oh God. Give her the word that's from you. Help us all to hear and know what you want us to do. Let us know our calling, Lord, and help us to obey you, Lord, in truth. Father, help us to have a sense of faith that we just can't even imagine, that other people question. And we can say it's our God that we're serving, Lord. 
we thank you, Father, for all that you have done and all that is to come. Lord, Michelle is in bereavement right now, Father. Bless her and be with her, O oh Lord. Bless our prayer team, Lord, who come before you several times during the week. I ask that you would continue to give them um, appointments and messages that they might bring those before you, O oh God. Let folks know that they're not alone in this world. We thank you, Father, for all you have done and all that is to come. Grant us safe traveling mercies as we go to and fro today. And thank you, Lord, for all that you've done again. In your blessed name, amen. Sister White, interceding on our behalf. While she was praying, I was just thinking about Elder Miles's dear friend that we've been praying for for months, uh, Deanna Cicelli. As many of you are aware, she has terminal cancer, and the Mayo Clinic has had to send her back home. There's, there's nothing that they can do. We've been praying for her for at least six months, if not longer. And she's been sent to hospice twice. But we've been praying for her. And, and twice, twice, she's been, shall we say, kicked out of hospice because they need the bed for people who are dying. And they saw no evidence that she was dying. Hallelujah, somebody. So, so, so obviously she had to go back to Mayo and they told her the same thing. They told her the other two times that there's nothing that they can do. And so again, they sent her to hospice and we've been praying, you know, for her. And uh, once again, I'm here to report that they told her she has to leave hospice. She is back home again. So, uh, the elder said, "I don't know what her what her what her purpose is at this point." I said, "Her purpose is to talk about Jesus and how He has blessed her to have that testimony, and because this is the third time." She's been sent to hospice. This is the third time that she's been sent home and she is still in the land of the living. So, so uh, God's will is being done in her life. And what a powerful testimony she is going to have about the goodness of the Lord. Now, I just wanted to give you that update because that's not what I'm up here for. Um, I want to share what the Bible says in Psalms 116, verse 12, because we're moving now into the aspect of the worship service where everyone can participate and be a part of the worship experience. Your name may not be on the virtual program, but this is the pl uh, a place in the program that you get to, in, you get to participate. And in of Psalms 116, verse 12, the, the Bible says, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? The psalmist is contemplating, God has been good to me. He's been better to me than I deserve. What can I render unto God for all of his benefits? Now, it looks like the folks on the left are the only ones that understand what I'm saying. So let me, let me, let me, let me talk to you for a moment. The psalmist is saying, God has been good to me. I'm still in the land of the living after going through three years of a worldwide pandemic that has taken millions out. What can I give to God for all of his benefits? 
And we're going to give this side an opportunity here. I don't know about you. Your alarm clock did not wake you up this morning. It is only in God that you live and that you move and that you have your being. And while you have breath in your lungs, we ought to give the Lord praise today. What? That's the question. What? shall I render to the Lord for all of his benefits? Will I take the cup of salvation? I will take the cup of salvation. I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. And so the psalmist is saying, that's what I will do. That's how I will respond to all the benefits of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. You know, God doesn't need your money. You need God's blessings. God has a thousand ways that we know not of. I'm telling you, I don't know about you. I've been tracking the gas prices because I've been praying. And they are going down. In the midst of inflation, in the midst of a war unprovoked in Ukraine that uh, sparked the spike in prices, yet the prices are dropping down. I couldn't believe how fast I was looking. I said, is that the price now? Now, the sad reality is, is I'm, I'm good with $3 and five cents gas. That's the sad reality. It needs to go below that. But, you know, I'm praising the Lord where it is now. You know, we just had Thanksgiving. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not preaching today. I got to calm down. Americans throw away 40% of all the food that they had on Thanksgiving. 40% of it gets thrown out. You know, it, well, praise the Lord. Somebody said, not in my house. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. That's called stewardship. That's called stewardship. That's a biblical principle. We praise God that that's not going on in your house and with my grown kids at home, it is not possible in my house. But I mean, just to think, you know, the fact that we have food on our tables and our refrigerators, uh, I have to chuckle. I have to chuckle when my wife says there ain't no food in the house. And I open up the pantry and I can't even walk in the pantry, elder. I can't get in. There's so much stuff there, you know. So what they mean to say, well, there's nothing real quick ready to eat it needs to be prepared but i'm looking in the pantry i've got to step around bags 50 pound bags of rice and bags of beans and canned goods and so forth i've got all kind of food in there it's just not ready to eat brother mcdonald right then and there quick fast and in a hurry we got food we got food got a roof over our heads and so we've got so much folks to be thankful for. We've got so much to be thankful for. And, and here's a way that you can demonstrate that tangibly, tangibly. So on our screen, um, the first thing you can do for those of you who have smartphones and you're comfortable with using apps, you can download the Adventist Giving app. And you can go to your Google Play Store or your Apple Store and you can download this app. And you can give right there from your smartphone. All you have to do is choose Tucson Sharon. Tucson Sharon. There are lots of Sharon churches, but there's only one that's in Tucson. So you can choose Tucson Sharon there, and you can give right there from the comfort of your app. Um, for others, you can go to our website, Tucson Sharon AZ. Dot AdventistChurch.org. Again, Tucson Sharon, AZ, AdventistChurch.org. And in the upper right hand corner, there's a place where you can give right online. It's simple, safe, it is secure. And you can give right there. Um, for those of you who have checkbooks that you're trying to write up all those checks, 
Finish up those checks. Hallelujah, Sister Rose. Somebody's with me. So you can write your check and you can send it right here to Tucson Sharon Church Attention Treasurer, P.O. Box 26566, Tucson, Arizona, 85726. Again, that is Tucson Sharon Church Attention Treasurer, P.O. Box 26566, Tucson, Arizona, 85726, and we will be able to receive your tax deductible donation. Lastly, for those of us who are here, if you look uh, toward the door, there's a box, a brown box right there. You can drop off your offerings, your tithes right there in the box and demonstrate your appreciation for what God has done for you so those are the ways that you can give and we're just praying that the lord will impress you as to what you ought to do let us pray father in heaven in the name of jesus we just want to thank you because it is god that gives us the ability to get gain you have blessed us with our incomes You've blessed us with our homes. You've blessed us with our vehicles. You've blessed us with the food on our table. You've blessed us with reasonably good health. And so we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done for us. And Lord, we can declare if you do nothing else for us, you've already done too much. How can we ever repay you for sending Jesus Christ to die in our place? So all we can do is to demonstrate our love and appreciation through these tokens that we offer to you today. We ask that you will bless it, press it down, shake it together, and may it run over into our bosoms is our prayer. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen, amen, and amen. We're going to now have our special music that will be presented to us and then after the special music uh, the next voice you will hear will be the lord's servant for today elder gail black Sabbath church. We're grateful for every season that we can give a testimony about our Lord and Savior. Amen. You know, people can have debates about when Christ was born. doesn't matter to us because it's just another excuse this month for us to celebrate and testify. And one thing that Sister Hudson and I know is that that night was no ordinary. Amen. Amen. no ordinary night for lying in a lowly manger was the holy Jesus child tenderly he laid so meek and mild the heavens and the
heart the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king for everywhere it was a and blessed Sabbath to all. Amen. It was indeed a holy, holy night. Thank you, dear Sister Hudson and Sister Epps for that anointed, anointed song. It just prepares this sacred desk mm -hmm. when an anointed song of praise goes forth. Thank you also, Brother Stephen, Thank you, Sister Jana, for reading of the scripture for us today. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as I stand at this sacred desk, I pray that you will hide me behind the cross of your son, Jesus, and that you will speak by your Holy Spirit. Speak your word, Lord, for your word shall not return void, but it shall accomplish that which you sent it to do, and it shall prosper in that for which you sent it to do. So speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Speak, Lord, for I am listening. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in, it is in the name of Jesus, Amen. name above every name, Jesus, that I pray, amen and amen. Bless the Lord. And so you heard the reading of the scriptures today scripture that I'm going to be bringing the message from that I believe the Lord has put on my heart. And I'm going to read it a little more fuller context here uh, because this passage is from the Old Testament and it's a prayer of Nehemiah upon the return of the children of Israel to the city of Jerusalem after 70 years in captivity in Babylon. The people of Israel returned from captivity and they attempted to rebuild the desecrated temple. It never matched the splendor of the original temple that Solomon had built. However, one thing that was not rebuilt was the fortress walls around the city. And so it's in this context that we are reading the word of God. And I'm just going to actually start at verse one and read through six 
so that uh, you get the big picture here. Hear the word of the Lord. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Chapter 1, verse 1. The word of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. It came to pass in the month of Tislev, in the 20th day, that I was in Shushan, the city of Hananiah, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down and its gates are burned with fire. Verse four. And so it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your, your commandments. And verse six, which was our verse for today, please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. And so we see here, Nehemiah is praying a prayer of confession and a prayer of contrition as well as intercession. And so I would just like to say at this point, confession is good for the soul. Oh, many, many, we know that. We know that. Now, we, we often hear of five or six various types of prayer. Sometimes we'll categorize prayers. There's a prayer of worship, which focuses on who God is. Mm -hmm. His worship, hallelujah, God Almighty. It is recognizing that God is sovereign and all worthy. He is the almighty creator and the sustainer of all things, all by himself. He spoke in it, so. He is all glorious yeah. and adoration of God's greatness is a part of worship. And also we, we hear of something that's slightly different and, that, different and that is the prayer of praise. Now praise recognizes God's power and the great things he has done and what he has created. And there's just a slight if you, if you uh, hear the nuance, just slightly difference, although it overlaps worship. And when we look at God's creation all around, it causes our hearts to rejoice in praise. When we see what he has done in our individual lives, where he's brought us from, it causes us to praise. And then slightly overlapping, but a little bit different, is the prayer of thanksgiving. Yeah. We just came out of Thanksgiving season. We just heard a glorious song of, oh, what a glorious holy night. Yeah. And it causes Thanksgiving to well up within the depths of our being. Thanksgiving expresses gratitude, personal gratitude, for what the Lord has done for us and what he is continually doing. And then there's a prayer of supplication. Supplication is asking God to provide for our needs. The root word is actually supply, supplication, supply, supply. And, you know, that's stated by Jesus in the example of prayer that he was teaching the disciples and teaching us. When he said, give us this day our daily bread. That includes not only food, especially for us today 
but all of our basic needs, such as shelter, clothing, health care, employment, all of those things are in our daily bread. And we can read that in Matthew 6 and 11. And then we have the prayer of intercession. Now, one of many, many things I love about this marvelous church family is that there is ongoing prayer all the time. Practically. Amen, amen. And so on Tuesday mornings, you already know, but I'm going to repeat it. There's 6 a.m. prayer. And on Thursday mornings, there's 6 a.m. prayer. And then there's midweek prayer that most of us grew up with on Wednesday evenings. And then as if that doesn't fit someone's schedule, there's everyday prayer at noonday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Praise him, hallelujah. And it is during those times that prayers of intercession, not just for our needs, but for the needs of others are made heartfelt. And then finally, there's the prayer that, and this is not by all means conclusive of all prayer, but all types of prayer, but they're the prayer that we don't speak very much of, although we strive to live it. And that is prayers of confession, repentance, and contrition. And so when we speak of confession, as we said, confession is just good for the soul. You know, as we travel in our daily lives, we may be, get up praising and going on and, and uh, we may rear in someone or someone cuts us off in traffic and it causes us to lose our praise. And we need to recenter ourselves with a prayer of confession. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight at all times, my strength and my Redeemer, and we can be washed by the water of the word and washed by our confession. Prayers of repentance. And, you know, with repentance, that is simply saying, after confession, now confession says to God, and then there are times when on a case by case, individual to individual basis, confession must be made. But confession says to God, I confess, I did it. Yes, I am. I stand convicted, except for your glory and your grace. Confession, I confess. I can't say that, uh, no, I, 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 I didn't do it. I didn't know, or, you know, I was just kind of born that way, or, you know, I, I grew up an orphan. You know. These are the prayers where we admit that we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans uh, chapter three, verse 23 tells us all have seen, all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. And so when we come to pray, let us always be mindful as we center ourselves in God's presence that we have confession for sins unknown and unknown. But sometimes we stumble ourselves along the way so that we may be washed by the water of the word Prayers of confession are sincere prayers to God. Sometimes in a collective public setting, like in church when we come to the altar. Most frequently, however, I do believe such prayers are made in our prayer closets. When we're talking prayers of confession or in our unspoken prayers as we kneel at the church, uh, the church, you know, at the uh, altar. And there are prayers of contrition. And you know, the prayer of contrition, this is why the example that um, was selected for our reading today, Nehemiah's prayer was a prayer of contrition. And contrition may be defined as godly sorrow, remorse and regret for offending God and disobeying his commandments. It's not just uh, forgive us our debts. Godly son. When we think of how we have broken the heart of God and yet he loves us. 
when we think of how his beloved son, our risen Lord and savior, but he died for us and we were washed by his blood. Contrition, how great a love. When we think of how we have offended God. And so I'm just going to make mention of a few prayers and allow us just a little time to contemplate in our hearts and see what the Holy Spirit is saying. There are a few prayers of intercession and confession and uh, contrition. There, in fact, there are plenty that are found in the Bible, but I simply chose Second Chronicles chapter six. You see where I'm going here, a little different than some of you may have thought. Second Chronicles chapter six, verses 24 and 25. Now, this was Solomon's prayer, and it was an intercessory prayer. He completed the glorious, beyond description, beautiful temple. Yeah. And then he set his heart to pray, and he prayed and said in uh, uh, Second Chronicles 6, 24, as he is praying, he says to God, if your people Israel are defeated before an enemy, because they have sinned against you and they return and confess your name and pray and make supplication before you in this temple. Then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land which you gave them and to their fathers. And you know, we can pray that as well. Lord God, Bring us back to that first where I, that place where I first believed. Bring us back to that first love. Daniel prayed a prayer in, in Daniel 9, chapter 4 and 5 is what I'm going to read. And I know in this congregation and in this beloved Seventh-day Adventist church that most of you already know it by heart. You know the whole chapter by heart. Nonetheless, the word of God says... This was Daniel praying in captivity. And starting at verse four, he says, and I pray to the Lord, my God, and made confession and said, O Lord, great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and with those who keep his commandments. In verse five, we have sinned and committed iniquity. And we have done wickedly and rebel, even by departing from your precepts and your judgments. Now, we know the history of Daniel's life. He was just a teenager, brought up, uh, taught the word of God. And by the time he was carried away to Babylon, what, 16 years old, maybe 15, 16 or younger, specifically. And but we know he was a righteous man, and yet he confessed and repented for the entire nation and for everybody. And do you know, saints, we are in that place today as we look at America, the United States of America. As what uh, pastor has said a couple of uh, months back, a post-Christian nation. We have fallen from so high. But yet we can stand in the gap and intercede for this nation that God would at least delay because the timing is in his hand the hand of judgment, and that he would forgive us our sins. And so that was Daniel's prayer, prayer of confession and intercession. And in Psalm 51, I want to kind of highlight this prayer because it's one of the greatest penitential prayers in all of scripture. It was following David's most egregious sin. And it's set out in 2 Samuel 11 that tells all about it. It's when he committed adultery with Uriah's wife, which resulted in her becoming pregnant. And then he got involved in conspiracy, a conspiracy, a deadly conspiracy. We've heard we're all conspiracy thrown around a lot now, but it was a conspiracy to commit murder against her husband to cover up the sin. Jesus. 
and he thought he had gotten away with adultery and conspiracy and murder, actually murder. But Nathan, the prophet of God, confronted David with his amen. Thank you, pastor. Spoke truth to power under the anointing of God. And he confronted David with his sins. And you know the, pa the passage is so lovely to, to uh, be able to speak on a Sabbath morning because those who are here are the ones <laughs> that know the word of God. Thank you so much. You know, you know. Amen. But nonetheless, when David was confronted, you know the story, but I'm going to uh, just condense it. The story of having, you know, just a wayfaring man came by one evening. No, no one necessarily impressive, just a visitor, a traveler, just an appetite. Oh, I'm, I'm hungry. Just an appetite. And instead of, they, uh, instead of the, the story goes, this very wealthy rich man going to his huge flock and taking a sheep to prepare for the wayfaring traveler and just going there. He went and took the poor man's sheep who only had one beloved little ewe oh, lamb. And he killed that sheep and prepared that. And that was an egregious sin before God. Now, when David heard and the scales fell from his eyes and the prophet said, you are the man. See. That is the backdrop for Proverbs 51. And it's a beautiful chapter. I've read it many years of my, my life, my salvation. It's recentered me when I've needed such. And I won't read all of it, but I'm going to read verses 1, 2, 3, and verse 10. Because in that passage, that chapter, Psalm 51. And if you don't know it, any of you don't know it, mark it, write it down. And the word of God says, David prayed and said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Yeah. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. I confess, I acknowledge. Mia culpa, I did it, it is I. I acknowledge my transgressions. And then verse 10, it's such a beautiful request and petition and cry of the heart. And it says, create in me a clean heart, O God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And so I would dare say, dear ones, as we contemplate just these prayers, prayers of repentance, confession, contrition, and sometimes our own sins in, in our lives have brought spiritual and natural consequences upon us and on others. But I don't want to leave us in the dark. I don't want to leave us in a gloomy place talking about guilt and confession. I don't want us to be heavy in this glorious season. I don't want us to leave out on a dark note talking about our sins and our transgressions and our confessions, even though they are required and they are essential. So the last verses that we'll focus on is going to transition. Man, amen. Because God has faithful promises, for, not only for the exiles in Babylon, yeah. but also for each of us amen. who find ourselves here today. And those of you who are uh, watching on Zoom and YouTube and all of those that uh, ways. I want us to close with our loving, merciful Heavenly Father's response to our deep, heartfelt prayers of confession and contrition. And I want the conclusion of this message to be Christ-centered, as all of our sermons should be. But going back to 
Solomon's prayer, his prayer request on the dedication of the temple. And he said, Lord, if, if we get captured and carried away by the enemy, and if, if we repent and turn around, would you have mercy? But listen to what God said. Second Chronicles 7 and 14, he says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Saints of God, can we do that for the United States of America? Is it impossible for God? to hear from heaven and to forgive our sins and to heal our land. Let me just go a little bit further, farther into and further into the discussion. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 10 through 13. And this is also surrounding the time of the, the uh, Babylonian captivity and all the rest of it. But, you know, this is a scripture that we often will misapply it or we'll take it out of context or we pick the part that tastes good to us. But I want you to hear this. And this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 10 through 13. And it, it, the, the word says, for thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed in Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work toward you and cause you to return to this place. Now that's what was told to Jeremiah. Remember they were, they were hauled off captive as a result of their own sins and down in Babylon. I submit to you that we are in Babylon in the United States of America, Babylon all around us and Babylon and the consequences of the sins wherewith our nation is bound and then the word says, and sometimes we just read this and we just stop right there, but listen, listen, dear ones. The Father God said, after uh, saying, I will cause you to return to this place, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Now, how many times do we hear people say, well, I know the thoughts I, I think toward you, says the Lord. I know what, what I have prepared for you, says the Lord, and all the, the rest. Verse 11. But don't stop there. Press on. Listen to the rest of it. Listen, Brother McClellan. Then, verse 12 says, you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and then I will listen to you. And verse 13 says, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I believe, dear ones, that our country, although we are at the brink and we know that the hour of God's timing is approaching the midnight hour, but we can still request and prevail, Lord God, stay the time, stay judgment that others may be brought into your kingdom. Have mercy upon us. And finally, brothers and sisters, how does God respond to us? Both to the prayers of the saved, to believers born again, and to the prayers of the unsaved. And maybe even those who never even received Jesus or as their Lord and Savior. This is in Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 13. Hear the word of the Lord. But what does the word say? It is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Faith, that is from That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, Confession is made unto salvation. Confession is good for the soul, for the believer, but it is also the way that we bring our hearts into alignment 
with Lord God, I am a sinner and I need to be saved. Have mercy upon me. Somebody, somebody maybe on YouTube or on Zoom or somewhere where we don't even know because it's going in very different places. If this word of God finds you, do not miss this opportunity to pray and call out. For with your heart, God grants you belief by faith unto righteousness. And with the mouth, you can confess him. For the scripture says, verse 11, that whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the Lord is rich to all who call upon him. Verse 13, and whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Somebody somewhere needs to hear this message. This is your time, perhaps. And so, and, and another scripture just popped in mind. It's not on what I've written, but John uh, 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. And so as we look back here in Romans, which simply reconfirms the word of God. Whoever believes on him who said he is the way, the truth, and the life, he will not be put to shame. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then finally, there is great hope, great promises, and a great promise, great joy in 1 John chapter one, verses nine through chapter two. And I'm just going to read that starting at verse nine. Again, saints, loved ones, confession is good for the soul. Yes. I'm not saying that we're walking around here needing to be washed by the water of the word, but we are all the time. And if we just got washed by the water of the word, then, you know, the next day, let's get washed by the water of the word. So hear the word of the Lord. If we confess our sins, again, I'm in 1 John chapter 1, starting at verse 9. And the word says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Chapter two, verses one through two. My little children, this is John, the, we call him the revelator, right? My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So dear ones, as we are going through our prayers, our times of thanksgiving and praise and adoration, let us not give short shrift to confession, contrition. Let us pray. Father God, it is in Jesus' name that we come, as your word is said boldly, Lord God believing your word. And we have spoken what we do believe you have put on our heart. It is your holy word, which shall not return void. It shall accomplish what you sent it to do. Just like when the rain falls and gives nourishment to the earth and the, and the plants grow up, your word shall accomplish what you sent it to do. So move like yourself, Holy Spirit of God. And bring glory to yourself and let your word find fruit and fruition in our hearts. It is in Jesus' name again that we pray. Amen. And amen.
Bible says we have an advocate, amen. So because we have an advocate, we need to let somebody know, amen. The song we're going to do is go tell it on the mountain. And of those that have not learned the praise dance yet, we're going to give you permission to go ahead and praise and dance anyhow, amen. Let's all stand. Amen. We want to thank God for the message he gave to Elder Black. Can we say amen one more time? Hallelujah. Thank you for that message. Let us bow our heads. Father in heaven, we just thank you for the word that was spoken to us today. Thank you for the reminder of the importance of the prayer of contrition, prayer of confession, Lord God. And that, Lord, we have that advocate for us with God the Father, Jesus Christ. In this season, Lord God, where people are willing to think about you, when people are willing to acknowledge the birth of your son, may we not get caught up on which day Jesus was born. May we acknowledge that he was born and that changed the human destiny and change the trajectory from sin to life and that we all might be able to experience that salvation that his birth brought for us and so father we just pray and ask that in jesus name you will bless us with the good news to share with others this holiday season and now may the lord bless you and keep you May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day, both now and forevermore. We ask this in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. We ask that you please be seated for a moment of meditation. And we will, okay, elders, yes, just, just before we leave, somebody had a birthday this week, and we want to celebrate our pastor. Happy birthday.
Okay. And so, so, Pastor, how old are you then? 57, 57 proud. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, on, on behalf of the I'm church. I'm younger than you. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> on behalf of the church, we just want to let you know that we love you. And it's just a, a gift of gratitude for being our pastor and celebrating your birthday. Praise God. the Lord. Thank you. Let's have a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much for our pastor. We thank you, Lord, for his leadership, and we, we're grateful that he, 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 you have blessed him with another year of birth. We, we pray now, Lord, that you continue to be with him and his family and be with his schooling, oh Lord. When it's all said and done, Lord, we give you the honor and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.